All right, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Sunday afternoon, 1.30. Well, it's actually past 1.30 now. Take three. We tried to get started. I don't know. We had some technical difficulties. and But anyway, I think we're good now. Okay, good. I think we're great. I think we're are rolling. We, and Are we good? <laughs> Can you talk back to don't me? Don't ask the camera if we're good. Sorry. The, um, so thank you for joining us. Uh, let's get a couple announcements out of the way. Okay. Uh, first of all, we got a healing rooms coming up. That's Friday, November 6th at 7 p.m. So we are asking you to help us find sick people. We're not trying to uh, build a healing ministry here. We're trying to set prisoners free. We're trying to find the people that need help and set them free. So uh, if you know someone sick, share this broadcast with them. Share uh, HealJoplin.com with them. Do, do something in some way to let them know that we're going to be praying and ministering for, to the sick on Friday, November 6th at 7 p.m., just a couple weeks away here. Uh, it's, the address is there, 315 East 44th Street, Joplin, Missouri. So help us find the sick people. We actually want, uh, we, we'll pray for anyone, but we're All asking. All the sick people. Yeah, we're asking for the ones that uh, the doctors have given up on. We're asking for the ones that have been prayed for a thousand times. You know, these doctors like to hand out life sentences mm -hmm. or death sentences, we'll say. Life expectancy sentences and... We've seen God turn impossible, completely impossible yes. situations around. So uh, if you've got, if you know someone who's sick and you'd like to submit a prayer request for them or you yourself would like to submit a prayer request, go to HealJoplin.com and there's a form there. You can submit it. Uh, in fact, we're going to pray for a couple of different things today that have, that have just come in. Uh, so I want to, um, coming in great. We All right. to be online. All right. Thanks, everybody. Everybody can see us now. Good. So um, we're going to be praying for a, th a couple things that just come in that are very serious, um, and so we're going to hit that together. Okay. You're not with me on the heel, the heel Joplin thing. I know. You always say we, and in my head I think just you. Well, the moral support is really what I'm counting on from okay. you. I watch. <laughs> I watch faithfully. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so uh, we'll do that today, and we'll just release healing through the camera right there as well. Um, so healjoplin.com. You can also request a prayer cloth. The, uh, we, these are, how, how would you say this? It's a hanky. Oh, it's a hanky. I say handkerchief, handkerchief, which is right. I don't know. What, what is the right way to say Handkerchief? I don't know. I don't know. But out What's of, the right way? <laughs> maybe somebody knows the right way to say it, but you've corrected me a couple times. So I'm trying to be, you know, I'm trying to have some self-awareness. It's a hanky. <laughs> All right. So we mail these hankies out. <laughs> Um, anyway, these hankies are healing <laughs> cancers and, uh, you know, getting people out of death situations. And uh, you can also request one of those to be mailed to you. So we mail these out all the time. We're, you know, we pay for the shipping and we just send them right out to anybody who needs them. Um, also, you know, there's a there's so many. Uh, I'm going to take a very, very tiny rabbit trail here. Okay, go. Concerning healing, uh, many people have... Uh, only believe traditions of men oh. or doctrines of uh -huh. men concerning healing. Yeah. Um, there is an incredible chasm between what Jesus, the results that Jesus got and the apostles and disciples in the New Testament got and what we even expect to get today. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's why we're continuing. And I've had people challenge me on this, like seasoned ministers. Like, uh -huh. you, yeah. can't, you can't believe for 100% healing. I don't. I don't see. I don't know what you're believing. Why? I don't know what you're believing for, or what your standard is. If you don't, okay. Well, I wouldn't just believe for like ninety percent or better, or fifty percent or better. I mean, that's a yeah. little. So, so we are trying to not only uh, bring truth into the situation, but also demonstrate it. In our house, we have nearly one hundred percent success rate mm -hmm. for healing. So that. Uh, we, there's ways that we do this, which this is none of your business, but except the results are available. And oddly enough, the one thing that we've been chasing and has been seemingly the hardest to get rid of is is uh, seasonal allergies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so how are you doing with allergies? Because we, we lay hands on you every day yes. and we don't beg God no. to do anything. We're not We're not even asking God to heal. I am a son of God, and I can release the power of God at will. Okay, there is a new thought for so many people yes. right there. Bing. And I have been speaking to your body, and I just command, I'll just do it to you right now. You ready? Yeah. 
you will suffer no longer in the name of Jesus. Yes. And we've been doing that every day. So I would like you to maybe give a testimony. You know, how's it going? I don't even know. Um, well, normally my seasonal allergies mm-hmm. encompass all four seasons. And I have medication daily, one type for sure, sometimes two. So one thing that I have noticed is that there have been times recently where I skip needing medication or I forget to take it because I don't have any symptoms. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward. Good. I'm looking forward to that because uh, then we'll we'll say of, of everything that's hit us, and this is not just headaches. I mean, there's some incurable things that have hit us and things that do not get better without medicine, all the way to allergies to warts. Remember that wart? That you tried to freeze for yes. like six months or a year. It was a long time. And you, I think warts like that freeze away stuff. Then they Because you were just feeding it and it kept growing and growing. It was like the size of my thumb. Gross. <laughs> on our boy. and uh, But you prayed for that thing and it started peeling off in layers and then just went away. It really went away over the course of like a weekend. Yeah, it's which like is all bizarre. Of a sudden, all of a sudden, hey, that thing's just about bizarre. gone. Bizarre. Jesus. So um, when we... Sp- when we heal, when we heal the sick, it's a command from Jesus. Heal the sick. So is raise the dead. It's a command. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, cast out demons. That's yeah. another command. Cleanse lepers. Freely release the kingdom. All commands from Jesus. When we do this, we speak to the condition or the sickness or the illness as a person uh-huh. and command it to do what we want. Most Christians, though, do not realize how what they even believe about healing and sickness or death. Yeah. Um, be, and they, so they don't really understand that what they believe is the tr- traditions of man until it's challenged. Yeah. So either challenged in their personal life with an issue or challenged on behalf of, you know, someone else that they're believing for healing. And um, oddly enough, I find that you don't actually end up really understanding what you believe until you lose. Yeah. Right. Because... Now, this is important because we believe that Jesus healed everyone and that we are supposed to heal everyone Mm -hmm. 100%. But there have been times that we have lost and people died. They die. So the way then, but then all of a sudden you start coming up with excuses. Well, okay, so they died because... Um, they didn't have enough faith, or um, because it must had have been hidden they had an open door, or it wasn't the Lord's just, timing. Like, yeah, so it, <laughs> I, honestly, I feel like in our times of loss, that is when you have to pay attention to what starts coming out of your mouth or what thoughts you're having, yep. because that's how you find out how much. Like I found out, wow, I believe a lot of crap. Yes, I believe yes. a lot of mm-hmm. untruth mm-hmm. because it's in that press in yeah. those times of emotional distress that. What's in there just sort of starts flying yeah, out. Yep, yep, yep. So that was free. Yeah. So if, if you are not, if your life is not glistening with hope, if your life is not experiencing an abundance of victory accompanied by power, mm-hmm. not only for you but for your family, you are believing lies. Yeah. If it, let's just, I mean, let's just get down to brass tacks. If I lay my hands on someone and they're not healed, whose fault is it? Yours. It's not God, it's not God's fault. He he's no. not holding healing back. No. You cannot support that. It's not it's not even on the same wavelength of truth. Uh, the devil cannot stop God's power. The person you're praying for, they can't stop the power of God. They don't I mean can you can't stop the power of God. Come no, on. No, you just can't. Whose fault is it? It's my fault. I must accept responsibility and I must take responsibility to figure out where it is <clears throat> that the where the breakdown is, so that I can start following in the footsteps of Jesus. Yes. So uh, it's an okay rabbit trail because today we're talking about power. Ah. So um, <clears throat> healjoplin.com. Also, we'd like to invite you to join us uh, at 3 p.m. on Sundays uh, for our in-person gathering. Uh, we're we're training, equipping. We do. We have worship. We have uh, teaching. Uh, we course pray for people, heal the sick. Um, what, what would you ex- best just like one sentence or maybe three or four words? What would you describe? How would you describe our Sunday gatherings? Um, like Jesus in your living room. <laughs> Depending on who, what Jesus you serve, that could okay, be the real Jesus in your <laughs> living room, Jesus not pseudo Jesus, room. but the real Jesus yeah. in your living yeah. room. So, 
So transfigured.church has all the details. Um, you can also go there and read our vision. Uh, it's very unique um, and it's very powerful. You might even raise your eyebrows oh, uh, nice. when you read it. Well, so. and, and because it's living room, as house church, you have the freedom to ask questions. Yeah. You have the freedom to have a dialogue back and forth. Um, and I think that questioning is really good whenever our questioning is done out of a heart to understand, you know? Yeah. So it, you can't really do that at regular, you know, mm -hmm. where the congregation is filled with 3,000 people. And like, the, what are you going to do? Like, raise your hand and be like, excuse me. <laughs> well, we have a question answer time after yeah. every teaching. Yeah. And people get set free during that time. Mm -hmm. People are like, I believed this stupid lie my whole life. Mm -hmm. Especially and, women. Yeah, especially with seeing women set free. Uh, the most probably. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so transfigured.church, we'd love to see you. Come and check out uh, what we're doing. Maybe you would fit in. Um, all right, so <clears throat> let's talk about power today. Uh, we, we have these 24-week um, teaching or training cycles that we're going through here. Our goal uh, is to uh, equip, equip you to win. It's not to teach you the Bible, okay? It's not my job to teach you the Bible, the, That's my, revolutionary. <laughs> according to Ephesians 4, the fivefold ministry is to uh, bring you to maturity. Yes. Okay. It's your job to read your Bible. <laughs> well, I don't, yes. So to bring you to maturity, what is maturity? Maturity is, is you growing uh, until you reach, and here's, here's the actual wor uh, verbiage, until you reach the full stature of the, uh, the full, ah. Uh, I got a couple of versions measure mixed up. Measure of the stature of the fullness yeah, of Christ. Yeah, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. What that really means is that Jesus is our example. And uh, when I reach maturity, Jesus and me is no difference mm -hmm. in the results that yeah. we get. So uh, that's not even on most people's radars. That's not even taught a lot. But that's the purpose of apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, yes. evangelist. That maturity would, uh, would start coming on people and in mm -hmm. people and that... That people start to get whole and all these cycles that we were just talking about mm -hmm. in people's lives, cycles, what do you call it? Cycles of dysfunction or yeah. something like that. Yeah. That they would that they would stop, that that sin would no longer be acceptable mm -hmm. in a believer's life, that there would be a victory over all types of sin, uh, that people would be would start doing the works of Jesus mm -hmm. with real fruit. So um so our job is not to teach you the Bible. Our job is to bring maturity. How do we bring maturity? Power and truth. Yeah. Truth in power through love. What is love? What is love going to do for somebody? It's going to say, you need to stop that. That's killing you and it's robbing your family. Yes. <laughs> A lot of people think love has to be soft and... Um, if like if it feel like it feel you know like remember whenever Judah, Judah was like two and we had a new baby bin and um, you know we'd like <laughs> right. take his hand and be like nice yeah. nice yeah, 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 yeah. gently gently okay that's not love I mean it was for a baby but mm -hmm. love rescues love tells the truth love, rescues, love yeah. takes people from bondage and puts them in freedom yeah. So um, in this process of training people, of bringing people into maturity, uh, this cannot do be done by teaching alone. Uh, teaching is not what transforms you. Uh, what transforms you is in a, a, power, a power encounter with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, we are transformed uh, from glory to glory as we behold him. Mm -hmm. So it can't be just an informational thing. No. We can't just be handing out details about the Bible or about Jesus or about whatever you know no. we we've, we've got to be uh we've got to be uh people of power ourselves that unpack revelation uh as a light to people and this power paul said we don't uh our our message is not in word only mm -hmm. it is in power yeah indeed. and yeah and so this power has to come out in our teaching this power has to come out in our training because we what are we doing every time we train uh it's pulling down strongholds. It's pulling down traditions. It's pulling down lies that people have be uh, believe yeah. that, according to Mark seven thirteen, causes uh, the traditions of men causes the word of not of God to become null mm -hmm. or without power in our lives. So uh, this this idea of teaching is not just handing out information. It's going to war. Yeah. When we teach 
We're going to war. We're uprooting things. Yeah, we're uprooting, we're tearing down, we're destroying, mm -hmm. and we're building up. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let's let's just have a little conversation about this. Because okay. we were talking about this the other day. So we noticed that um, in, the, in the modern church, we see a lot, and these are going to be blanket statements, and of course, that's not true in every situation, mm -hmm. but it's true in a lot. You see teachers uh, and people leading who are very over, overly corrective on spiritual matters mm -hmm. concerning power, concerning tongues, concerning encounters. Oh, like if you happen to have a trance or a vision. Yeah, concerning visitations. Like down. So very cautious. Be careful. It's emotional. Be, be careful of these things. Yet they do not, these same people typically do not stand at the uh, at the pulpit and correct sin. Okay? So it's very much corrective and cautionary on the side of spiritual encounter, of uh, Holy Spirit, visitation, tongues, trances, visions, uh, all of these things, of course, that we find in the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and, and, and rarely do they touch sin. However, Paul was fierce about sin. Yes. Very fierce about sin and never corrective about uh -huh. spiritual encounters. Or like if people ha saw angels. Yeah. Or encountered like all these things. He never he never was like, "Hold on, brother." Yeah. Yeah. This this spirit, the spirit behind this um attitude or this teaching is robbing the church. Mm -hmm. It's robbing you. It's put a yellow light on everything of the spirit. Mm -hmm. It's put a yellow light, which is caution, yeah. uh, or a red light even in, in a lot of cases. Oh, yes. A yellow or a red light on everything of the spirit and uh, and a uh, and an implied green light on sin because of grace. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, there's so love, much love covers. Yeah, a grace covers a multitude of sins. So you have Christians with no character, no power. And full acceptance, the idea of full acceptance while living in sin, not demonstrating power, even told that encounters with the Holy Spirit are not for today or that to be careful because you don't know what spirit you're going to get. And here, yeah, like, I don't, like, where's people's faith that they automatically assume that the devil or a wrong spirit or a demon or something new age heaven forbid, that that would, that has more power to encounter you than the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Like why, why do we give so much power and credence and faith to that over Jesus? Uh, it's superstition. Oh. And fear. Superstition and fear. Yeah. The truth is though, that we as sons of God, especially if you've been following our line of teaching, uh, we as the whole purpose, I'm just going to fillet a lot of uh, traditions here in one sentence. Jesus came for the reason of getting his spirit inside of us. Mm -hmm. Now, and we, we've been teaching in our teaching cycles, uh, uh, our training cycles. Uh, last week, we taught about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. power, fire and power, spirit and fire. This power, Jesus came to make, uh, to, to bring his spirit to the earth so that we mm -hmm. could become just like him. Yeah. On the earth, a new race of people, a new kind of people, uh, the last Adam, a new order, not or after the order of Adam who brought death into the world, but after the order of Jesus who is seated far above every principality and power, every ruler of darkness, defeated death, hell, and the grave, and we have also because we're in him. So Jesus came to get his spirit in us. That's why we're born again. That's mm -hmm. why the blood was shed so that we could become a brand new race of people, yeah. a brand new humanity. Yes. Okay. Listen, if you believe that the spirit of God can transform your spirit and you become born again or saved and Jesus is in you, then you darn well better expect the Holy Spirit to be speaking to yeah. you. Yeah. You, you better expect to be encountering him because right. he lives inside of you. Yeah. So now that we've become a brand new humanity, now we're ready for power. We're ready to be baptized or fully immersed in God's power, which in the Greek, this word power, dunamis, means miraculous ability. We are ready to be submerged in miraculous ability. And this power, as we taught last week, 
is not just for the sake of doing miracles, okay? Does power heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons? Every time. Yes. Every time power comes in contact with something broken or dead, it's fixed. But power is also there that we might begin to comprehend uh, the reality of everything that God has given us mm -hmm. as the sons of God. It takes power. It takes power to illuminate our spirits with the realities and, and the divine revelation of all that God has done and all that he is. We have become inheritors not only of the kingdom, but everything that God has, including, the Bible says, God himself. We cannot do this without power. Now, can you see why the enemy is so bent on removing yeah. the spirit of yeah. God from church or the spirit's activity from a believer's life? Mm -hmm. It's, it's a threat to him. It is the power of God in the yeah. earth through us. God delegated that his kingdom come as will be done through his people by the power of God. Wow. Pin drop. <laughs> Pin drop? No <laughs> mic drop for that? Well, I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so here, let me read, um, let me read from Galatians 6, 14 and 15. Okay. So this, uh, I mean, we could teach for weeks on this, but we, again, our, our, our goal is not to uh, teach you the Bible. Our goal is to get you to feed yourself. See, we, we have to move from feeding people to equipping them to feed themselves. Yes. Right? That's so just, yeah. We, Sorry. We, can, we can't spoon feed you into maturity, but we can show you where the spoon in the soup bowl is and say, now start drinking, start drinking, start drinking, start eating. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we have this mentality, and especially Western uh, Western Church uh, world, where you know, well, I come Sunday to get fed, or well, I'm no longer getting fed there. No, you're a big fat baby, okay, that hasn't learned how to pick up <laughs> whatever it is and eat yourself. I almost said bottle, but <laughs> hopefully we can get past the bottle, all right. And this is the state. This is why America is in the state it's in. Yes, it's because we have uh, given permission for. We have. Uh, what's the right way to say it? We as leaders have not demanded fruit. Yeah. We have to not set the standard for results ourselves. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we have a weak and impotent body of Christ ruled by and dominated by traditions handed down to us by men which have made the word of God of no effect in our life. Why, I mean, why do you think that in China... Um, how, you know, there are women apostles that lead hundreds of thousands yes. of underground churches. Yes. Because when you're in that kind of environment, that kind of press, you very quickly learn to feed yourself the word, the word that produces power. And they don't have a lot of written word, okay, right? Yeah. They don't have a lot of that. So what word am I talking about? The word of the Spirit. The yeah. Spirit that lives inside of them. Yeah. And they begin to, to learn very fast. Yeah. Very fast to feed yeah. themselves and help other people to feed themselves. Yeah. We've got to become a people who knows what it takes and does what it takes to get and keep power. Mm -hmm. If you become a, a son of God who gets and keeps power, this is going to draw a straight line all the way through every area of your life mm -hmm. because your character is going to be yes. touched. Your it family is going to be touched. You are now going to have the ability to confront darkness, mm -hmm. uh, with, with, which without power, you have, you have no ability to confront it. You have... Yeah. You know, uh, you know, people like to talk about authority and having authority, but uh, this again, power. This word is miraculous ability. The authority of God is to have His ability. Yeah. It's to speak when He speaks. When we speak, it is as if God Himself is speaking. That's what power does. So, power and authority are hand in hand. And um, when we begin to take responsibility and uh, to learn how to get and keep power, then we've got something going, mm -hmm. okay? And people, uh, you know, there's a lot of, so much false humility in the church, and they're always talking about, well, we're brother, we're not seeking his face, we're not seeking his hand, we're seeking his face, you know? Mm -hmm. But Jesus told the apostles and the disciples, uh, before he rose, ascended from the earth, he said, go to Jerusalem and wait for power. <laughs> he didn't say, wait for my face. Yes. Well, his hand is sort of attached to his face. Well, if you find his hand, just look up. Bill Johnson says there's his face. Yes. So um, get you got to begin to learn. I'm going to lose everybody here except for one or two who want to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. 
learn a lifestyle that gets and keeps power. Okay, let's back it up with a scripture and then we'll be done. Woo! Galatians, Galatians 6, 14 to 15. Paul says, My only boast is in the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus, our Messiah. In him I have been crucified to this natural realm, and the natural realm is dead to me and no longer dominates my life. This is Passion Translation, yeah. which I love the way it says it. Circumcision doesn't mean a thing to me. The only thing that really matters is living by the transforming power of of this wonderful new creation life. So the quick, the quickest little <clears throat> pathway to power mm -hmm. that I can give us right here is this. The pathway to power, for those two or three watching that want this, the pathway to power is, in Him I have been crucified to this natural yes, realm, it's dead. and the natural realm is dead to me. It no longer dominates my life, okay? To, to move into power, to step into the kingdom, to step into maturity, first of all, there's got to be a death. Mm -hmm. I have to die. Unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it does not produce a harvest. Yeah. I have to die. I have been crucified with Christ. That is positional, yes, but I actually have to walk away from my life every day yeah. to follow Jesus. Then the natural realm is dead to me. I'm no longer moved by the opinions, the preferences, the, the, the traditions of men, all the things that the enemy does to push me off center, mm -hmm. to get me to go another direction. It's dead to me. It has no power, authority, or influence in my life. What's left? The, what's left is uh, the, the, the transforming power of this wonderful new creation life. This new creation life is the new humanity that we have by the Spirit now and being you know, baptized, immersed in power. Next week we'll talk about speaking in tongues and praying in the Spirit. But this is, this is the missing element for the world being transformed. This is the missing element for discipling nations. Yeah. This is the missing element between everyone dying on their deathbed and getting up and being raised to life. You just light the room on fire. Yeah. Good heavens. Got any final thoughts you want to share about that? I, we have we had so many conversations about this. Well, I, you just get going, and I'm kind of like, <laughs> you know. Well, uh, but, no, I think that my first thought is we have to stop living in a place that expect, that doesn't ha that lacks expectancy for power. Yeah. Uh, we expect sickness and disease. We expect, you know, economic downturn. We expect we're always, you know, hope for the best and preparing for the worst. Yeah. But... Why why do we not live in a place where our expectancy is for the power of heaven in increasing measure to overtake our life? Yeah, and we need to be that. that yeah. We are the image of Jesus in the earth with the same mission, message, and power yeah. available to us. All right. Well, let's pray. Uh, we got. Let's pray for these prayer requests. Uh, we're going to pray for a man named Jim, and then we're also going to pray for Joel Griffin who is in our region, he used to, actually used to be from here, and some of our friends have requested, you know, we pray for him. He was in an accident <clears throat> uh, not long ago, maybe in the past week, with uh, severe brain damage. Uh, I don't know what the status is there, but they, it's not good. They actually need a miracle. So okay. we are going to speak into these situations. Yes. Uh, this man named Jim is requesting prayer for bladder cancer and Parkinson's disease and diabetes and dementia. Wow. So how how can we Mercy Jesus. How can we uh how can we accept allergies and then try to speak to these things? Yeah. <laughs> We've got to treat it the every sickness and disease must be treated yeah. the same if we're going to have uh the same uh, victory and results over every sickness and disease. So, in the name of Jesus, yes. Jim, we speak to your body. In Jesus' name, cancer go. Parkinson's disease, leave him. Diabetes, leave him. Dementia, we break your power in the name of Jesus. And we speak to your body. Be healed from the top to toe in the name of Jesus. And Jim, I set you free. I set you free. I set you free. I set you free in the name of Jesus. Be made whole. We declare this over you. You will live and not die. You will function at full capacity. Your organs and systems 
come online now, 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 in the name of Jesus, it will be this way and no other. So I just see that gummy residue um, in your brain that it is inhibiting connections from one place to the other, dissolving right now in Jesus' name, and those connections being reestablished. Yes. All right, for Joel, Joel is uh, in a hospital bed, I, I assume brain dead. Um, I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the that's the kind of text and things I've gotten. So um, in a horrible accident, a uh, husband, uh, I think a father. Okay, in this situation, we need... Rescue. We need complete rescue, mm -hmm. uh, complete yeah. help now. So uh, Joel Griffin... Yes. In the name of Jesus, you yes. will yes. live yes. and not die. Brain, be healed. Spinal cord, yes. be healed in Jesus' name. You be made whole. In the name of Jesus, I speak life. I speak rescue. I speak help. I speak mercy. Life. You will live. You will live. You will live and not die. Uh, Joel, in the name of Jesus, yes. you be healed. Trauma, go. Yes. Injury, go. Damage, go. In its place, you be made whole. Now, now, you be healed. Now, you be made whole. Now, in the name of Jesus, from the top to the bottom, in the name of Jesus, I speak life to you. You get up out of that bed, Joel. In the name yes. of Jesus, yes. you will live. Respond to life, Joel. Respond to life, Joel. Respond to life now in the name of Jesus. Your body be filled with power. Be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. We say yes to life. It will be this way and no other for you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Anybody else struggling with sickness, disease, pain, or whatever? Uh, you be loosed yes. from your affliction in the name of Jesus. Be healed and be made whole in the name of Jesus. Uh, Dean, whatever it is you're expecting there, we agree with it. Uh, yeah. I command function to come to you yes. in the name of Jesus now. Function now in Jesus' yes. name. In Jesus' name. Anything else there? I can't no. read some of that. So, all right. Well, <clears throat> that's how we pray for the sick. <laughs> and how long do we pray for the sick, Haley? Always. Until it's done. Yeah, until the job is done. So, join with us in praying for these issues that we uh, sent out there today. And uh, join us this Tuesday. We'll be praying again. Um, any, th any final thoughts? Anything I've forgotten or left out or need to talk about mm -mm. before we go? Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't forget our healing rooms coming up Friday, November 6th at 7 p.m. 315 East 44th Street in Joplin, Missouri. Also, uh, don't forget our 3 p.m. Uh, in-person Sunday gathering. That's coming up in like 35 minutes. Ooh. So uh, join us for that. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. You were born to change the world. So be filled with fire, the Spirit of God, the life of God. May the destiny of your family line forever be altered yes. by encounters yes. with Jesus. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.